Hi, Dave here, and we have a new episode of the uh, art review series. I believe it's episode five. Um, this time, we're going to take a look at the work of Victor Hugo Harmatiuk. Um, I think he is um, a Brazilian artist. I think, um, and yeah. This guy, Victor, actually has a very distinct style. Now, we will be looking at, of course, his portfolio. And we're actually going to start from his earlier works. because um, And kind of work our way towards his more recent uh, work. And you'll see um, the work he has now, or in the recent years. I think it's where he actually developed or kind of found his own very distinct style and you'll see what i mean um uh okay so we'll start with this first piece now this piece is entitled the old water well and this was posted six years ago um and he he does have a nice note in the side or description he says i still like those better than my finished ones so I, I, I think what he's trying to say here is that um, stuff like these, the more impressionistic, impressionistic kind of sketchy stuff is more, there's just something about it that makes it more energetic, I think. And I usually do find that in my own work as well, where the more developed ones uh, tend to look kind of boring and lifeless compared to my more sketchy ones where it's more dynamic and energetic and stylistically this is kind of what i want to do more impressionistic stuff more kind of storytelling mood um stuff and um yeah for victor hugo harma harma took um you'll see that even even though his style has developed he still kind of sticks to that kind of um, storytelling, um, painterly style. And you'll see um, as we go on. So here you can see him using a... It's actually a, a circle brush with some color dynamics probably uh, uh, turned on. And uh, it's not super detailed, but storytelling wise, I can tell the mood. Or I can appreciate the mood. I love the lighting. And usually, um, storytelling kind of uh, uh, the the biggest factor I think in storytelling is the the lighting. Um, you can say so much with just um, with with just changing where the uh, light sources are, where the shadows are, and stuff like that. And uh, these these are actually really really good um, sketches. And he does say these are mood sketches. Now these ones are, oh, I love this. Um, these ones are actually, uh, th these were posted four years ago um, as of this recording. Um, and yeah, you can kind of see that each piece has kind of a main solid um, color scheme. Kind of a base color. This one is more of a yellow red, greens, um, blue red. This one is red green, right? Red and then green stuff here. Um, this one is bluish green or reddish green. <laughs> this one is more neutral, um, grayish. Um, uh, wow, and I love the kind of soft lights here. Uh, and these is kind of a yellow red. And um, even though these are sketches, I mean, it, it basically already tells a kind of story or it gives um, information about that certain place um, this one was also posted four years ago and again even though it's not like photo bashy and, and uh, I mean he, he probably did use some kind of photos maybe um, or maybe not but this is what I'm inclined to do uh, it's just more natural and it just looks better and it feels like it was done by a hand you know because sometimes if I over photo bash or you can see or you can even see it in art station where people just um uh, 
do too much of the uh, three. I mean, of course, maybe that's their uh, thing where they uh, where they shine. But often when, at least for me, when they over, I can tell when they overdo the photo bash. And it's essential. It's where my art piece or my illustration is essentially dead, because <laughs> I I usually just overdo it, and I think I should stop with the photos uh, for a while, or just lessen it to a large degree and save it for kind of a, um, uh, last kind of face stuff. And you can see in this kind of a kind of a city thing. Here, this this is actually more dynamic. Um, this actually looks more like a keyframe to me. Um, even this one. This one is more mood. And yeah, I, I do like the lighting. And you can see he does suggest the rocks. And if you focus in, it's not even that um, detailed. So I want to be able to reach this kind of uh, uh, look where it's more suggestible and not exactly you're not trying to be very definitive with your um, art now this one was posted three years ago um, so you can still see it's kind of ad although this one is a little more night uh, tightly uh, painted as you can see here um, oh it's a kind of repeat uh, this was this is this kind of process hmm. so he is more of a painter to me and I think that's one of the things that attracts me to his work um, and I do like when artists uh, post uh, well if not videos uh, gifs or gifs because uh, I think it helps especially for beginner artists and maybe for someone who's kind of uh, who wants to maybe work with you I think they would love to see your process and see if your kind of methodology kind of fits with their project or whatever um, hmm. so again this one's more painterly and we have a gif here hmm. so you can tell that it's not he's not exactly being super organized with the uh, layering um, he's just doing it face by face, kind of like um, Evan Lee, where probably the layers aren't that super organized. It's uh, he usually uh, it's, it's more about the, the end goal, and not necessarily a kind of clean process. It's just uh, um, again more impressionistic, not just the painting itself, but the process. It's just more direct, and uh, I I do like to uh, I'm more inclined to. Uh, do this i think oh so this is another oh he's showing the process and again you can see a very rough sketch and then he just does a simple kind of underly painting and then layer by layer he just kind of uh, defines it even more and he and he doesn't paint every single thing which is uh, cool uh, he only paints say the kind of focus area or, for, or in this case some of the kind of fabrics in the flags and of course the uh, the foreground soldiers right and it also creates some kind of depth and it actually does look like some kind of oil painting and yeah yeah he's very painterly in that way so this one is a sniper done three years ago as well now this time is using a a very opaque circle brush actually but um mm, uh, if you compare it to Anthony Jones' work, Anthony Jones does love, or he's more... He likes using opacity type brushes where he can kind of build up the values that way. Um, for Victor Harmatiuk, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but uh, he's more of the opaque type of painter. And um, right now I can actually, de I can't decide for now where I'm going to lean. Or maybe I'll just be uh, kind of doing both. But uh, yeah, I do like the the energy, the impressionism in his work, uh, in Victor's work. Um, and you can see he uses a few brushes, like a kind of a, 
a stick kind of brush with a scatter and angle jitter and uh, yeah it's more I don't know it's uh, again it's less about the design I think and more about well the sniper it, it, this thing is more about storytelling again um, <clears throat> Okay, so this one is, well, this was posted four years ago. Um, a prayer for the ancestors, okay. So again, if you look at this character right here, he's not even that defined. Um, although this is probably a photo bashed thing, the wall, because uh, you can actually see some of those uh, remnant, remnants. You can see remnants. <laughs> of the uh, photo right there okay now this one is a, actually a cool storytelling piece it, this actually looks like a kind of keyframe um, and I'm going to assume this guy just found a piece of gold perhaps and he does have a description here on the side trying to think more about storytelling and less about painting technique Ooh. okay and yeah, although even if he focuses on storytelling, which he does really well, um, his painting technique is still pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, I, I still like the way he paints. Um, so this one, it's a little, it's a mix of everything. Um, he uses some photos here and there, and he just paints this part, I guess. And uh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, so he, ha he does have a nice description here again. Some pieces that I believe don't represent my work anymore or do not deserve a full project, but I like to have them here anyway. I, uh, I kind of get what he means because your portfolio is something that... Um, I've heard like pros say that you have to be kind of wary of what you put in your portfolio because uh, that's what people will expect from you. And uh, you have to make sure that uh, what you do in your portfolio is something not only uh, you can repeat, but uh, something that you actually well, are interested in doing. Um, yeah, he does have a lot of interesting paintings, and uh, these actually have multiple techniques involved, like different kinds of techniques. This one has more of a clean, this one is layered, I can tell, because the edges are cleaner here. Um, although stylistically, or uh, in terms of painting method, this one right here, um, this one right here, let me just... Uh, I want to save those <laughs> uh, and um, this one is more I think it's obviously a thumbnail but uh, um, oh in this one I think the, these types of paintings are you can s see some of that kind of effect in his uh, excuse me more recent paintings and here he does use a lot of the mixer brush uh, you can tell. Um, so yeah. So here is a, a speed paint of his. This was this was done two months ago, and he's only using a circle brush here. And excuse me. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you can still tell the mood, and of course, it's a kind of snow forest thing. And he does like adding color dynamics to his um, circle brush. It just adds more texture and a little more slight variety. Because, uh, yeah. And again, uh, yeah. <laughs> the storytelling is pretty good on this one. I mean, it's a simple piece. This is kind of the main subject. But, you know, at least he can, he, he can kind of focus his painting on this area since it's not since this is the kind of main focal point in the image and everything else in the background is kind of kept um very simple and um yeah this one was posted four years ago um 
Here's a nice process of his. Yeah. And he, he didn't even have to use photos. And this is what I'm lacking. You know? Um, and I think I need to do more of the fundamentals. The painting fundamentals. Since I do like using or... Since, since I'm inclined to do 2D work. Why not kind of uh, focus even more on the uh, the kind of painting aspect and uh, and not rely too much on the uh, kind of photo bashing. So this one is an animated sketch. Very interesting. So this could actually be a keyframe. And uh, he often likes adding some noise in his work, which is uh, kind of cool and very cinematic. Uh, it reminds me of another artist. Um, I can't say his name because it's kind of a, I think it's Russian or something. Um, but he does a lot of amazing keyframes, very cinematic kinds of stuff. And he's a, uh, a, a painter. He doesn't, he doesn't really use photos as much. And, but yeah. Oh, so this one was posted uh, two years ago, and this is where I think you can start to see his kind of style and the kind of thing I see in his work that kind of uh, sets him apart is his kind of flat brush that he uses. It's kind of a uh, it's kind of a broad flat brush that's kind of rakey. You can even see some of it here, and uh, he likes showing off those strokes. And I think he's also using these, uh, the smudge tool, maybe. Uh, it feels like he's using some kind of smudge tool with that same brush as well. Because I feel like he's dragging some paint as he goes. Yeah, and it, it's, you can definitely see that uh, kind of uh, flat brush that's kind of set on a directional shape dynamic. Um, if you check out your brush settings, brush settings, you can see a setting there that um, sets the brush to a more directional um, uh, kind of uh, orientation. So you'll always have the same kind of side painted. And again, this is a uh, this is more about storytelling right here. And uh, look at that. It, 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 this this monster thing isn't even that detailed and uh, but it does tell the story and it's also very impressionistic which I'm a I love uh, impressionistic stuff because it's more kind of bold and uh, it feels more confident to me so these are apparently some of his old works although the actual posting time was 10 months ago so maybe he found some of his, um, so this one is actually more of his style, this kind of, uh, you can see that kind of, those kind of flat strokes. You'll see, you'll see that a lot in his, um, recent work. So this one is not too far off from his kind of current, um, level. So this is a great mood painting right here. Some reds and some greens. Oh, this I saw this one earlier, I think, right? But this one I think is kind of the preliminary. Um, is it here? Oh, this guy. So this one probably has some kind of photo, a slight, slight photo bash. But uh, and you can s maybe maybe, uh, maybe not. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely an older. You know what? Let's uh, open image a new tab. Save that for later. Um, and even this one, you can see some of that kind of flat brush thing, that, that directional brush. Now this one actually reminds me of Greg Rukowski, Rutowski, Rutowski um, which I will be reviewing the work of eventually. Um, and you can tell that uh, this guy, Victor, is trying to, oh, I love this mood piece. This guy, Victor, is experimenting with all sorts of style all sorts of styles excuse me and um yeah it's actually pretty cool that you can kind of see um the kind of past works of an artist and see their kind of 
experimental work. And uh, yeah. Oh, so this one is definitely kind of a, a key, a key point in his portfolio. Oh, so he is using the mixer brush. He does say in the side, experimenting with mixer brush. And this one is entitled Zoo. So maybe it's not the smudge tool, but rather the um, the mixer brush tool. And yeah, if you, if you kind of focus in on uh, uh, kind of the details, um, it's so nice looking. And it does fit his approach because he's more, I feel like Victor is more of the uh, storyteller and less of the designer. Um, think um, Anthony Jones. Anthony Jones work is more design stuff. Uh, Evan Lee, the recent guy we uh, reviewed, was um, it's a little bit of both. Um, but Victor Harma, <laughs> oh shit, Harma to you, Harma took, is... Uh, a great great painter and uh, now this one is um, posted three years ago so this one is not um, really in his kind of current kind of uh, visual look style thing but uh, yeah you can tell he's very he's still very painterly in this one and uh, that really hasn't changed much and you can see it in the entirety of his portfolio even in this one uh you, you can kind of see the impressionism in his work which is very apparent um hmm so this one is a mine entrance of some sort so again i love the gif or gif <laughs> Um, so what does he start with? Oh, uh, kind of a value painting. And then he just builds it up as he goes. And again, he loves using that circle brush. Excuse me. With the uh, color dynamics on. And uh, yeah, he just builds up his painting. Without photos. And that's kind of what I want to develop in my own kind of uh, process as well. So this one are kind of environmental visuals, this dev stuff. Mm -hmm. They're actually, oh, I like the kind of hue variety here where you have some purple, some red, some oranges. It reminds me of uh, June Ahn's work, uh, episode two, I believe. And uh, this one is more, I think it's designing for a specific project for this one because they all, stylistically, they all look kind of the same. So this could be kind of a project-based thing. Ooh, but this one was—it's an actually an old work, an old work. This was posted four years ago. And again, even though the style is a little different, um, it's still painterly, and of course, he's focusing on the storytelling aspect, which uh, is very, very cool. So this one was posted three years ago. Oh, and you can see that kind of painterly stuff in his uh, kind of design sketches. So he does some design, I guess, in his kind of uh, work. Oh, I think this is project based, maybe. Uh, so maybe he had to change his style. Uh, but again, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter for him probably, because he has a good kind of painting. Um, um, experience so it's going to be easy for him right. so again uh, this one is this was an old work of his right I think and then he updated it and again even though he did use some photos you can tell that he he is still largely in charge of the piece and I, I think he just used the lasso tool for this one and then used a clipping mask to kind of paint in those uh, white stuff. Um, yeah. So this one is actually more of his thing. This, is, this was posted a year ago. Forest Spirit. 
the title is <laughs> and uh, again you can see that kind of uh, I just like I like seeing stuff like this where it's more bold and kind of confident and I love the way he portrayed that kind of slight um, lighting effect that's kind of passing through the uh, clothing and again, it, it, this is kind of the thing, or this is close to what I think I would um, uh, be better or more inclined to do in at. <laughs> so I do like that kind of thing. So he, I think he, uh, this was a class demo. Now we did... Uh, show this earlier but i think he was just uh showing his past work again so this one was posted two years ago and oh this one is kind of a nice smooth painting right here even this one mm, and again he's using really simple brushes and when you're doing kind of sketches and stuff to, to kind of just figure out the uh the piece I think using some really basic kind of circle hard edge and kind of soft brushes are enough to, to kind of tell your, to kind of get the idea out, which I think um, is really efficient to do. This one is more painterly. And you can see he's using the mixer brush here. And here you can see the kind of flat brush. Is he using the mixer brush? It does look like a, uh, he's using the smudge tool, but maybe this is some kind of mixer brush effect, along with just the um, brush tool. And, uh, okay. Oh, so this was, I think he participated in a Wild West challenge of something, scene one. Um, again, his focus, this could be some kind of keyframe actually. And you can see that he's focusing on this part where the kind of uh, light is um, apparent. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So this reminds me of uh, this thing, right? It has the same kind of a uh, brush effect, the flat brush thing, the kind of impressionistic strokes and great mood, lighting, storytelling, um, even this one is pretty cool and you can see that there's so there's some kind of character here um, and I love the way he portrayed a kind of light source coming from this part right here which is really cool and again he just painted everything else um, but look at that he just these are just some basic kind of a directional flat slash rake brushes and he, he is really good at um, kind of not detailing things because uh, I think if you're kind of a beginner or an intermediate kind of guy uh, I think you can develop certain bad habits like over detailing something and uh, yeah so he kind of keeps it simple and lets the story kind of uh, do the uh, thing. So this one's pretty cool. Um, posted two years ago and you can see his impressionism. And I want to be able to do this because it, it just gets more done in less time. Compared to having to do too much of the uh, 3D work. And I do want to be more of the idea guy. And not necessarily the kind of fine-tuned detail guy. You know, I want to do kind of big picture stuff. Like moods, stuff like that. Maybe some keyframes. That's kind of where my, uh, my, my interest is in for now. Um, here again, you can see the kind of flat brush. And when you use directional brushes, you can actually... Uh, this is a kind of common trait where the brush... Whenever you kind of turn a flat brush, you'll see that kind of a uh, spacing between the uh, the brush, and it looks pretty cool. Um, 
and I love the kind of lighting effect it does here. And uh, so this is a per, uh, kind of a different project of his. But this one is more, I think this could be a kind of keyframe actually. Um, and again, he's pretty good with the lighting effect as well. He can tell uh, kind of a, a, good, a good enough kind of mood or story by just playing with the, uh, the lights and shadows. Really cool stuff. And again, you can see the kind of flat brush he loves to use. And he loves showing off those strokes of his, you know, and uh, really cool stuff. Oh, this is a repeat post. Oh. So this one again, you can see his kind of flat brush thing. And he's kind of okay with showing the kind of spacing. And I think it's a... Um, it's actually pretty cool because um, it does give some kind of texture, right? Instead of your brushes um, being super smooth and stuff, you can kind of uh, add more spacing to your brush and just make it look more gritty and more um, kind of uh, with teeth. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh! I love the mood. Again, there is some kind of demon shit right here. And then this guy is... Well, he's gonna battle it out, I guess. Or is he holding swords? Or is he kind of tied up? <laughs> Either way, you're fucked, man. Um, again, a lot of his pieces are more inclined towards storytelling. And um, I think that's actually what he wants to do. Because you can see it in his portfolio. Now, this is more design stuff a little bit. Design, design. Ooh. And some more designs. Or storytelling, rather. Ooh, this is actually one of the first posts I saw of Mr. Harma Chuk. Tio. Victor Hugo. And uh, it actually reminds me a little bit of Anthony Jones' work. And I did see a video of Victor Hugo in... Uh, he does have a YouTube channel, although he doesn't use it as much. But uh, I have seen interviews of him. Um, unfortunately, it's not in English. So if you're Brazilian or something, <laughs> it may help. Uh, just search for his name. But I did kind of find... Uh, they did feature Anthony Jones's work when he was explaining something. So maybe... Victor is well, or was influenced by the work of Anthony Jones and I can kind of see it but what's so cool about Victor Hugo is that he's no longer a kind of he's not a kind of a second copy of Anthony he kind of has his own thing which uh, sets him apart which is really cool um, stylistically of course he loves using the flat brush and compared to Anthony Jones' work, um, Victor is more impressionistic, way more impressionistic and a greater storyteller than Anthony Jones. At least uh, when it comes to their portfolio, I can see Victor being the Victor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, oh, oh, again, even though he's using a kind of simple brush, circle brush, he can tell a kind of good story and kind of mood. So this could be a kind of, if not an underwater thing, this could be kind of a uh, space thing. Oh no, there's this kind of, this could be a kind of underwater thing. And again, he likes adding a little bit of noise. And, uh, yep. Oof. Wow. So these are some of his quick sci-fi sketches. Pretty cool. And again, you can kind of tell whether an artist is kind of uh, good or not, or great or not, is uh, whenever you look at their sketches, if it looks pretty good at the kind of sketch level, then they're probably a pro. And this guy is a pro. Um, oof. Again, you can see the kind of, uh, 
this kind of flat brush stuff he loves using that kind of flat brush and uh, this is a kind of strange object it's in it's entitled strange object and then dash sci-fi and uh, yes it is actually a strange object and even for the human figures here he didn't uh, detail it as much and i think that's a good enough depiction of i mean you can tell they're human beings right and he focuses uh, he focuses he focused more on this kind of thing and with especially with the kind of um this could be some kind of protective plastic and uh i love that he's not exactly showing everything in this um strange object and he's, he's kind of hiding it hiding it with this kind of plastic thing and it does add some mystery which is really cool again storytelling is kind of uh he's great at that So these ones are actually, uh, it does really show off his uh, kind of technique and style. These are kind of fan art pieces of, I think it's a game, Diablo, Diablo, Diablo. Um, I did I did remember um, seeing a kind of trailer of this kind of demon chick and she was so hot in the kind of animated trailer. Of course it's animated. Uh, and I don't know, she was kind of really hot and <laughs> ah, demon chicks, am I right? Um, and yeah, you can tell he's using that flat brush again. And I think he does add some sharpness to his work after to kind of add a little more punch and more grit to the uh, image. And again, he, sh he is he is showing off some of that spacing here in this in some of his brushes. And again, I'm not sure if this is the mixer brush or a smudge tool. I mean, it feels like he's dragging some paint. So maybe his mixer brush is kind of set differently because there are kind of multiple settings in whenever you're using the uh, the mixer brush and i'm still trying to figure it out as well but uh yeah look at that it's very confident i mean right wow look at that and again it's, it's not super detailed but it's enough i like that kind of cut between the uh, shoulder and the uh, the chest Oh, and their kind of ribs are kind of poking out. Cool. But again, it's not super detailed, but it's kind of enough to tell, guess what? The story. The story. And uh, yeah, so yeah. So this one, the kind of color dynamics reminds me of June Ahn's work, where he would also use this. Although for Victor Hugo, he doesn't add a lot of hue variety. I mean, he does have a little bit but it's kind of it's kind of contained within kind of a major color schemes for example the yellows and the blues and yeah <laughs> but again great storytelling um he knows how to play with the light the uh, the light sources here and it kind of psh, creates that kind of dash of light in the bottom right here and i love that kind of glow he did using the circle brush again and he, d he didn't even use the uh, the soft brush i would use a soft brush because i'm kind of using all sorts of brushes but this one is more painterly and he was able to achieve that kind of glow with just changing the uh, the colors so very interesting so this guy is definitely more of a painter um so this one is, it's an illustration for a Topia art conference. So this was posted two years ago. And again, I like that he, uh, this could be some kind of keyframe actually. And again, he likes adding that bit of noise. Now this one's actually a little more slightly, just slightly cleaner, uh, excuse me, than his um, other work especially for these balls but uh yeah 
pretty cool. Whoa, forest sketch, um, forest sketch. Uh, so this one is kind of impressionistic, way more impressionistic. And, you know, I do like, I feel like I'm kind of this kind of guy who would be more sketchy and more, um, I want to be more bold with my strokes, essentially. So I think he used some kind of lasso tool here and then a clipping mask, mask to kind of paint in those uh, streaks of light in the uh, leaves and stuff. And again, flat brush. Oops. So this one, you actually can't see the flat brush and stuff. Um, he doesn't use it for this one, but uh, the kind of highlights and stuff reminds me of, again, Anthony Jones's work because he likes adding like all sorts of highlights. But uh, this one is a little more fantastical. And again, he used some kind of a circle brush or maybe an a hexagonal kind of brush because I've seen him use that kind of hexagon brush before and I love that he does add some kind of paint canvas texture close to the uh, lighting and again he adds some kind of uh, a little bit of noise in the end uh, excuse me uh, oof. so this one is more I think he participated in some kind of evil book edition edition and uh, so these are some of his thumbnails um, and I guess uh, someone wanted to compile a kind of book of evil things <laughs> why I don't know but oh I love the kind of anatomy there pretty cool and again you can see that kind of flat brush um, rendering style there and of course the uh, the storytelling aspect of it pretty cool oh I remember these also being kind of featured in the art station main page and I love I love these uh, I had to download these um, sketches or paintings um, so apparently these were inspired by the work of Peter Moherbaker. Moherbaker. Um the Angelarium kind of project. I've seen the Angelarium stuff. It's pretty cool. Um So this is uh, so this is kind of Victor's take on fallen angels or some kind of supernatural apparitions. And I actually do like this um a little more than Peter Malker Baker's work because again it's more painterly I mean uh, Peter's work is more I mean they're great but they're meant to be like in kind of a stationary position because I, I, I think it's doing some kind of card series or something but this one is more I feel um, it has a little more storytelling to me and I think it's because of the, the uh, the uh, lighting, and of course I do have a bias for Victor's technique, the flat brush stuff, the directional flat brush, and the kind of impressionism in his work, and of course the mood and lighting and everything else. So yeah, and again you can see in every piece he does add some noise, and. Uh, I think it adds a little more cinematic kind of it adds and it adds a cinematic feel in uh, any painting. Um, oof. So this sketch was uh, done for the project Timescape. Interesting. Oof. No, here he does use some photos, but again. You can see some of those kind of flat brush stuff in his work. So this is apparently a kind of a possible new IP that uh, he's working on right now, or well, eight months ago. <laughs> um, but again, look at that. 
great storytelling. And this fishing boat is very interesting. I love the shape. Really cool. Look at that. Oof. So these were actually posted two years ago. So this one reminds me of Marta Nael's work. Uh, I think she's some kind of Spanish. I, I believe she is a Spanish artist. And she does love using um, like uh, kind of, well not neon, but very kind of a, eventually I will be reviewing her work as well. And you'll probably, you, you'll, you're, you're, you're probably familiar with her work because it's it, she does stand out and uh, i also love her style because uh, she's very impressionistic generally and uh, yeah so here you can see victor using the flat brush even two years ago so uh i guess that remained in his work and then you look at that look at that damn and you can see some of that kind of spacing in the brushes. And again, it's not super detailed, but it gets the kind of job done, you know? And it, it, it it's, um, even design-wise, you know, he's pretty good. He does kind of, uh, follow the kind of, uh, certain kind of rules of thumb. Where, for example, in this piece, if he wants it to be consistent, all he has to do is kind of repeat kind of similar forms and it does give that piece or give this piece some kind of consistency right so yeah pretty cool stuff pretty cool so this one is entitled Rex so he's using some kind of flat brush here photo bash and again it's classic kind of circle brush here and there Again, it's kind of a great storytelling piece. And, uh, yeah. Oof. Two months ago, this was posted two months ago. And this is, again, more wreck stuff. And this could be some kind of boat that's uh, broken up, maybe. And again, it does tell the kind of mood, the story. It suggests what this thing is. It's a wreck, obviously. And uh, I love the kind of painterly uh, strokes and the kind of confident kind of dynamic lines that he has. Who I'm back. <laughs> By the way, I just took a piss. Uh, yeah, I needed to pee. <laughs> oh, wow. I had a, uh, a really long kind of piss session right there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I feel better now. Um, oof. So this is some kind of fan art, I believe. Um, Path of Exile fan art. So I believe this could be the this could be like the game, and then he kind of uh, made a painting about it. Okay. Oof. So this one is a kind of experiment, I guess. But again, you can see that kind of flat brush thing. The very impressionistic stuff. Nice. And this is, well, a warlock of some sort. And again, you can still see his kind of uh, flat brush used there. Um, strokes and stuff. And uh, the lighting effect, the mood and kind of storytelling aspect of it, pretty cool. Uh, oh, this one is more 3D. Or is it? I don't think so. So this is artwork done for Seven Lions Train to Nowhere. Hmm. Oh, it's a kind of a cover piece. Oh, so he did some thumbnails. Now these one, uh, these ones are. He doesn't actually use the soft brush. Uh, the uh, excuse me, the kind of flat brush impressionistic stuff here. If you showed me this kind of piece, I wouldn't have assumed this is 
his work. So maybe this is more of a project based thing where he had to kind of change his style a bit to make it more, um, I guess, cleaner or fit for a cover for a specific project. Now maybe here he has some painterly stuff, but uh, yeah. And again, with the thumbnails alone, you can tell that he has a kind of good grasp of storytelling because of the way he uh, paints the light, right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So this one is the... Uh, oh, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> so this was actually posted two days ago as of this um, recording, so... So this is some kind of monster in the background. And again, this one is more of his style. He had the, the kind of flat brush, the kind of powerful dynamic kind of strokes, the confident strokes, the storytelling. And uh, yeah. So that is the kind of work of Mr. Uh, Victor Hugo Harma Chuk Tiuk. Um, and you know hopefully he, uh, he if he does kind of if he jives with your kind of inclination as well uh, i suggest you uh, take a look at his work subscribe to his um, art station or follow him on his art station and um, yeah download of course his images to kind of have a reference in the future and add them to your own library and stuff so uh yeah so this recording is kind of under just an r so it's pretty good pretty good <laughs> so yeah i hope to see um, well i don't hope i'll see you in the following videos um and uh yeah um keep painting Stay free.